This is the Wednesday Weekly Wins. Hi, I'm James Wedmore, and with 17 years online, I've built my business to over $12 million in sales per year. And this is the first non-business business podcast that shows you how to apply the principles of spirituality, energy, and mindset to grow your business beyond your wildest dreams, all from the inside out. This is the Mind Your Business Podcast. Here we are today on the Mind Your Business podcast with Kathy Reuter from our case study finalist 2023. Kathy, I'm so excited for you to be sitting here with me today because you have such a special story. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Thank you for carving out time. Kathy is going to share with all of those listening her journey of entrepreneurship. And if you don't already know, every year, the community of BBD is invited to submit videos of their testimony of what's happened in their business over the course of a year. And Kathy's part of the finalists that were selected where the whole community votes. And then we have six final panelists. And we bring them on live during James's once a year free live training, the rise of digital CEO, and they get to share their stories to inspire other entrepreneurs. So as I talked to Kathy today, for all of those listening, I hope that you can hear some inspiration in her story. Kathy, let's start with going back to that moment when you joined Business by Design and walk me through where you were at in your business, where you were at in your mindset, and then take us through what's changed. Okay, definitely. Yeah. So I had been in a network marketing business for about nine years. And I originally got into that so that I could be a stay at home mom. I have three little kids. And, you know, at one point for the last two and a half years of that business, I had just been going through the motions. You know, I had lost that joy and that excitement. And I just felt like I had outgrown that and was ready to move on and just pivot into a new direction in my entrepreneurial journey. And I had been listening to this podcast with my husband for like five years. And all of a sudden, I just had this idea pop into my head that, oh, it would be so awesome if I could just create my own program. You know, like I've had so many people talk to me over the years about mindset. And I really think that I would just love to create, you know, a program to help entrepreneurs around mindset. And this idea just kept popping into my head and I just kept pushing it down and ignoring it. And I just kept going through the motions in my business, doing the things, just not really feeling fulfilled, knowing that I was ignoring, you know, that nudge and that calling to make that leap because it is tricky sometimes when you're in a business that's producing residual mm-hmm. income, it's producing good, it's supporting your family. And now all of a sudden you want to do something completely different, right? And so finally, I had, after two and a half years of pushing this idea down, I was like, this is it. Enough is enough. (laughs) You know, I drew the line in the sand last summer and I told my husband, I'm like, listen, I'm doing this. I am creating my online program. I can't wait anymore. This is absolutely ridiculous. And when I make a decision, I just go for it. Like there is no stopping me at that point. (laughs) And so I told my husband, James's ideal student. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. There's no looking back. Like I don't just like dip my toe in the water and let's just see if this works out. It's like, Mm -hmm. we're doing it. It's all our freaking boats. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You're going for it. And so my husband was like, oh my gosh, well, Kathy, you have to sign up then for BBD, but James only offers it once a year. And I was like, what? And literally it was three days later, it was something crazy like that, like three or four days later where all of a sudden the doors for BBD were going to be opening up. Oh. And I was like, that is definitely the universe telling me if that's that not this a idea. sign from the universe. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is it. I'm like, this is this. I'm making the right choice by making the shift and pivoting in my business. And so, you know, I remember sitting through the rise of the digital CEO being like, oh my God, come on, hurry up. Just like, I just want to get into this program so I can get going and learn how to create my first ever online program. And so I enrolled in it and just, you know, immediately dove right in to um, monetize before you make it and launched my beta and was able to help 12 people and earn $10,000. And I was like, this- How fast was that? That was within like my first 30 days of- Oh of enrolling my gosh. in it. In your first month, you made 10 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I was not wow. messing around. I was like, wow. I'm going, we're going all for it right now. And yes. 
I just remember like my husband and I, we'd sit down, like go through all the trainings as much as we could at night once the kids were in bed and stuff, because, you know, I'm with them all day long. And then I was doing that at night and yeah, it was just so simple to follow. So when that happened, I was like, mind blown. I was like, just follow the systems. (laughs) Yeah, I I know. I told him we were talking about different analogies for BBD and the the token one is it's the Lego instruction manual. And I told him, you know what it reminds me of? It's like when you have a master chef recipe from your favorite restaurant and then you show up to a dinner party with this dish that people are just mind blown by. And you're like, I can't really take credit because I had the complete recipe. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You're like, all Um, I did was follow this like you follow the recipe. recipe. Yes. And it, and it can be applicable to any niche, any, any type of digital business. Yeah. He's got it in there in, in business by design. Okay. Yes. There are so many cool things with what you said. Love First, it. I want to go back to when you said that for two and a half years, I believe you said that you were yeah. in this, I feel like I might want to do something different, but I'm not sure. And then you said you stuffed it down. What were you saying to yourself in those moments where you were denying becoming a digital entrepreneur. I was like, don't be stupid. (laughs) I was literally like, this is so stupid, Kathy. Like you're making really good money right now. You know what you're doing. You know it so well. You have been doing this for so long. Everybody who's been following you on social media now for all these years knows you for health and fitness. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to be diving into something completely different you know, what are people going to say about this? Is it really going to work out the way that you want it to, you know, those kinds of things. Okay. So there's a few things there. There's like, I are, I have something that's secure and it works, even though it's not totally fulfilling. And I almost feel like it's easier to make a big shift like this when you're in a scenario where you're not fulfilled or it's very painful and you're like, I got to do something different. But for Mm -hmm. you, it was, it was sustainable. It was dependable and you were successful. And then you've also got, it sounds like the other voices in the head going on of like, can you really do this as any, what are, what are people going to think when you pivot a brand? I know exactly. Like my whole entire social media was all revolved around, you know, health and wellness and that whole aspect. And now it was going to be completely changing to who knows what, because I had never created a program before. I was going to be doing something completely different. Yeah. So what was your actual experience versus the fear in your mind? So the fear in your mind is I'm going to pivot into doing something totally different. And people are going to be like, what are you doing, Kathy? (laughs) And then what was the actual experience once you launched that beta? People were like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Like, you're going to be so amazing at this. People that I guess had already kind of seen me as this mindset, kind of almost not guru, I want to say, but Mm -hmm. I, they already saw me this way. Yeah, exactly. Like a leader in terms of like having positivity and belief and instilling belief in others and helping people with their mindset. So they had already saw that. So they were super supportive over it. And we're so excited that I was making the shift. It really wasn't a big deal at all. So I made it into this big deal thing and it really was nothing. Yes. So what would you say to someone listening out there that's either sitting on the fence of starting their entrepreneurial journey or they're already inside business by design and they're freaking themselves out with the imposter syndrome or the what are people going to think? This is the best advice, honestly, is that... You know, if you're thinking about getting into anything in the entrepreneurial space and you have that feeling to just immediately listen to it, you know, I, you have to just listen to those little voices and just go for it because they're put there for you, like in you for a reason. And if you just ignore it, you're going to continue to feel like how I felt where I was just going through the uninspired actions of my life. And what really I didn't really like about that was that, you know, I always want to lead by example for my kids, you know, and I wouldn't want my kids to have a career or a business that they just were doing just for the heck of it, just to do it. Right. I want them to love, like really, truly love what they're doing. Um, So to listen to that nudge, or if you are in BBD right now and you're freaking out, there's absolutely nothing to freak out about. You know, you just literally just dive in, start following the steps. Don't change a thing do exactly what's in there. And it's like your success is going to be inevitable with it for sure. Right. Yeah. So once you got into monetize before you make it uh, and you launched that beta, what, what are some of the processes that you got into next? Like where, where did you go next in the program? I honestly, like I, we got really good. My husband and I got really good at just 
tweaking down and really getting good in, on our messaging. We worked on creating. Yes. Um, yes. I really, that was something that I needed to work on because I was completely changing the way that I was talking to people and what I was talking about. So we really got better at the messaging. We dove into that, um, creating uh, lead magnets. I dove into that, hiring um, our first VA. Yes. We did that. Yes, we did all of that. And it's been, I mean, it's been awesome. There is still so much more to do. I just, I love that about it. You know, I'm already thinking down the road to when I can finally host my first live event, but my husband's like, Kathy, calm down one thing at a time. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Love let's it. get going on it. Let's get going. <laughs> I love it though. I, I, everything is there. Like any idea, I love that about it so much. It, you know, any idea that we have or question about the business, it's just like right in there. Yeah. I what blows it. my mind about it is that, you know, at this phase in James's business, we're, we're doing, you know, he's pulling 10, 11 million in revenue a year. And still for absolutely anything that we're doing, we go into BBD and we get the process and we do it. And I think that there's a lot of courses out there um, or, and, and even I'm thinking in different arenas, like different digital courses that I've taken where it's like, okay, this is going to be level one of yoga teacher training, you know, yeah. or like level one of learning to meditate. But then there's, there's a different course that takes you to a different level. Right. And I think what's really unique about business by design is that it's designed to bring you in at whatever floor you're already on. If you are entering mm -hmm. from the ground floor and you have nothing, you have no audience, you have no product, you you've, don't know what you're doing, then monetize before you make it is designed to have you deliver a product before it's even made and immediately start gaining some traction with your audience and learning what it is that you do. Let me ask you this. When mm -hmm. you launched your beta, did the course change after you launched your beta from what you learned? Um, it changed a little bit because what I did was I, when I went through the beta, I actually taught it in real, you know, I taught it in real time mm -hmm. with that, with that select group of students that I had. And then after that, I went through and I started to break them down and like re-record things and kind of get it a little bit more organized that way, yeah. just because of my anal retentiveness doing that. <laughs> But other than that, I mean, it was pretty solid. It's a really solid, it was really solid course. Yeah. People so what I want, of want people to hear in that is that you can, you, you, you can launch the beta yeah. without having it totally buttoned up and you can decide, oh, yeah. yeah, that's the course. I just, I just launched it. It went great. I love it. Or you can go, you know what? I'm going to go in. I'm going to change this little detail for next time. Like, was there anything that your students wanted that you didn't anticipate that they wanted at where you learned that throughout the beta or the first couple of iterations of your course? Yeah. So as I was going through the beta with them, because what I was, so this is why you don't have to have it all squared away, right? You just die right in. You can be someone like me, not knowing what the heck you're doing. So I would create the content each week before like yes. the calls, right? I would do it as I go. And as I went through it, I was constantly asking, obviously, for feedback from my students. And really, the only thing that they wanted was they wanted to have like a little almost like workbook uh -huh. to go with each lesson prior to the lesson, um, basically with like my slides on it so they could take notes and have yeah. like all the information. So I did that. And then when I actually launched my, my program, officially, I made sure to have like a 65 page workbook with it that people would get mailed to them and all of that. So wow. it was great. Okay. Yeah. So that's a great example of I'm, I'm creating it as I go, but I'm trusting the people that are in the beta to kind of crowdsource and give me information about what more, what more can I add? What more can I want? And then the second time you do the course, it's so polished. It's like, you just got in the course. Here's your workbook. It's being mailed to you. We're ready. Yeah. That's exactly. Amazing. And I know I, I loved doing, I loved doing the beta launch with them because I was like, I need as much constructive feedback as possible. I want to make like, I want to make this as awesome as I possibly can. So if there's anything I need to add or tweak or take out or change, please let me know. And they were really honest with it. So I was so happy about it. Yes, I love that. And I hope that people listening are getting inspired by the, the how much action you took right away. Mm -hmm. Because even um, yesterday, I saw a comment come in on Instagram that was to James. And it was like, James, I just think that I, I'm not quite ready to implement or, or do a course yet because I have to create my entire product before I start through learning the marketing and the messaging and how to sell it. And oh, nice. I was thinking like, man, that is the exact reverse thinking that James teaches because you don't 
always know what's going to land and work until you get out there and start taking action with your clients. And then you can evolve your course as you go with them. It's so true. I know that's that was one of the things, you know, when I was on that two and a half year, you know, lull there, when I finally got started, I was just like, Kathy, just be okay taking the messy action. You're going to mess it up. Yes. It's not going to be perfect. You got to just, you got to learn as you go through this, right? Just like when I started my first business nine years ago, I didn't know anything about that either. The worst thing you could do is sit around and wait to have everything done and have all the information. That'll just, the time is going to pass by anyway. So just go now and you'll be that much further ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stay there for a minute. Like what are the, the you're, since you're the mindset coach, <laughs> what are the mindset hacks to, to flip you out of that self-stalling that happens when we're overanalyzing what's going to happen? What if it doesn't work out? What if people don't like it? What if I'm abandoning a good thing for something that's less secure, mm -hmm. which I know comes up for people a lot. It's it's kind of a paradox, right? When you think about entrepreneurship, you think, oh, am I, am I taking too big of a risk where this is going to make me feel less secure in right. my life, my finances, my schedule? And in the reality of it is, is that when it's done properly, it gives you more freedom. Exactly. But there's this natural propensity for people that comes up when you're about to take that leap into entrepreneurship. That's like, I'm scared because I'm going into the unknown. So what are some that's of your so mindset true. hacks to get yourself yeah. out of that stall and into action? That's right. So that's one of the things too, that I talk about a lot. And I even do this with myself too, because anytime that you're going to make a change in something that's unfamiliar, your brain automatically just wants to do whatever it can to keep you comfortable and stay right in that situation, even if it sucks and you don't like it at all, right? And it's because it's like you just mentioned, your mind is constantly wondering to the all these negative what if situations. What if it doesn't work out? What if I don't make the income that I need to make? What if people talk negatively about me? But we don't take the time, you know, our attention is on that. We don't take the time to focus on well, what if it works out? Like, what if this is the best freaking decision you ever made? And so it's literally just retraining and almost like reprogramming your brain to anytime there's a new situation and you feel that pullback to really pay attention to, well, what are the stories that you're saying to yourself in your mind, right? There are those negative ones. Get out a pen and paper and start journaling. Well, what are all the good things that can come of it? Like, what if this business that. works out? What if this business gives you more joy than anything else that you've ever done before, right? It's, there's so many amazing positive stories and things that could happen from this decision. And it's just simply training yourself to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Just you know? adjust the focus on the camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just the focus on now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was kind of like when we moved down to Florida from Massachusetts six years ago. It was the same kind of thing, right? I could have sat there and been like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I'm moving away from my whole family. I don't have any friends here. I know no one. What if I don't meet anybody? What if I don't have any new friends? What if I'm just like a loner? What if I hate it? No, instead it was like, yeah, but what if like you move down here and <clears throat> you meet some of the most incredible people of your life, which we yeah. have. And what if it ends up, you know, you find like your dream home and you're so happy and you're so glad you made this decision, just always focusing on, the positive situations. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. That's so good. Okay. And just writing it out. It really does help to write it out too. I think like whenever you get anything out and journal it out and just get the thoughts out of your mind onto paper, it's so much more helpful. Yeah. It's interesting that that helps in the brain. I think for me, when I write it out and I see it written down, it it pulls it it is a a disassociative thing where it's like instead of living as part of you as a thought now it's a thing out on a piece of paper yeah and if you all of a sudden just glance at it and think what if i saw james write that or what if i just saw a random stranger on the street slide me a napkin and it said that and i would exactly think, I don't want to pick up that belief i don't i don't like that that's what I'm feeding right now. So yeah, I think that's such a key practice to get it out of your head so that it's no longer living inside of you as a part of you. It's now it's now it's outside of you and you can choose. Do I want to take that back on or do we want to leave this to the side and shift focus into something else? 
It's so true because sometimes too, it's like you have that whole negative story written out and you read it out loud and you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Come on now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It starts to sound like a story instead of yeah. sound like a reality, which it's is how true. it looks in your mind. Exactly. I and think for you too, you are um, a mom of three. So I can imagine, I'm just speculating, but living, leaving a stable income where you have a successful career and you have three children and now you're going to start a business that takes a lot of courage. Oh yeah. Do that. It does a lot, a lot of courage, but you know, like I said, I always try to think, you know, what the, is the example that I want my kids to see, you know, I don't want my kids to see a mom that's just going through the motions and also mm -hmm. too, I don't want them to see a mom that has that lack of belief and confidence in themselves because ultimately that is probably why you would just stay because you don't really have the belief and confidence in yourself that you're going to make it. Wow. And so just constantly trying to <laughs> lead them the way, hoping that they will follow suit down the road and go after whatever it is that they want to go after, you know? I got chills when you said that. That's so I powerful. <laughs> yeah. So, so what would you say to, I, cause I know that we have a lot of young moms and actually I just talked to Kelly, her episode, I think will drop right before yours. So oh, as, awesome. as you're, yeah. So as people are listening, we've heard from one mom who literally joined BBD 30 minutes before she went into labor. <laughs> <laughs> that is an awesome story. It's such a good story. But for, for people out there that have any circumstance that feels like it could be a constriction on time or availability, whether that's you're a mom of three or you already have a full-time job and you want to try and start your business or, or you're the primary caretaker for a family member, whatever the circumstance is that's in your mind having you think, I don't know if I have time to do this. I don't know if I have the energy to do this. What would you say to those people? I would say those are limiting beliefs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and write those down. <laughs> write those down. Write that out. <laughs> no, um, honestly, you know, if it's a priority to you and it's important to you, you will make the time for it. And honestly, my priority first and foremost is with the three kids. And so I don't sit around and work on this business all day long or all night. I don't have a nanny come and watch the kids, even though people told me to do that years ago so I could get further ahead in my business and earn more income quicker. I never believed in that. It's not necessary. You know, I, I work on this very part time and you don't need to sit around. That's a whole, that's a whole limiting belief. This is what I was taught too back in the day that you need to be working X amount of time in order to have success, but you don't. As long as you have that mindset piece component, you have the plan to follow, you follow it and you're intentional and you're consistent, you can build. That's what I love about the online, this online business is that, you know, you build your life and then you build your business into it. Mm -hmm. So, and there's, and I always think about how there's always somebody else out there who's got it way harder right now, who has way less time, who's totally crushing it right now. Why is that? Right. <laughs> it's because, you know, it's so true, right? You always, you see those people and you look at them and you're thinking, well, what the heck? Well, it's because, right. They've got that mindset nailed down and yeah. they, and that's really, that's really all it is. You don't you do not need a lot of time. You so don't. you said you're, you're seven months in since you joined. You, yeah, we're, we're yep. a full year. We're almost a full we're, year. We're we're coming up on yeah. Okay, so you you did 10 grand in your first month. Where have you taken <laughs> the business now? <laughs> yeah. And then I've had two more launches since then. <laughs> I've had two more launches since then. We're going to be launching again in 3 more months and they were all about the same amount of income. Wow. Yeah. Man, that is incredible for like a part-time commitment into a full-time salary. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking, I mean, we, I do this very part-time I'm home right now with my last, my last little baby ever, who's not really a baby, but he's, he's three and a half. So he's still home with me all day, every day. And so, I mean, I work on my business pretty much every night for like wow. one to two hours, you know? So it's, it's very part-time. And when he goes to school in, um, August for preschool, then I'll have more time, which I am excited about. <laughs> but I'm not rushing it because Mommy gets you know, some time back. <laughs> exactly, mommy's going to get some time back. <laughs> it's That's okay. So I love it though. I just think that the the action that you take and the the mindset component and the tenacity that you've brought into creating your digital business is so inspiring. Thank what you. Do you want to leave people with? Well, I'd like to tell people that you know if. 
the most important thing is, is to just, I really feel that if you follow your heart and these intuitions and these feelings, you know, you'll never, you'll never go wrong. And that, you know, you all are here. We all have a purpose to be here. We all should be doing something that truly brings us joy and mostly fulfills us. You know, you want to be going to bed at night, feeling fulfilled, knowing that you had an impact. And as long as you follow that path, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to go to where you want to go. It's just one step at a time. The journey is not going to be perfect. There's going to be a lot of road bumps. There's going to be a lot of hurdles, but you're going to keep showing up and you're going to do it one day at a time. And you're going to be so glad that you followed that intuition, that little nudge. Yes. That's a great place to leave it. I know, right? <laughs> Follow the intuition. Follow that intuition. <laughs> my favorite topic. Oh, oh yeah, I know. Oh my gosh, so I love much, that. Thank yeah, you you're welcome. Thanks us. so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being such a gift to all of our listeners and for sharing your story. And thank you to all those out there listening. And we will catch you next time on yeah, the we'll see you soon. podcast. 